Today I'm going to go through a more in-depth run-through of uh, your BMW items, controls and media centre functions. To start with, I'm going to go through all the driver-facing controls. I'll start with altering the screen display, because I find that quite useful. Um, on the end of the indicator stalk there is a button. If you press this button, it changes the display on the screen. So there we've got our total mileage for the car, the total combined range presently according to the range predictor of the, uh, in this case it's an i3 Rex, so it's combined fuel tank and battery. Press it again, goes on to the percentage display. Now this is the display I like to have on in the car when I'm driving as I find it a more accurate gauge as to how far I think I'm going to go than the range predictor. Um, scrolling on. We've got some sort of consumption data uh, based upon how much energy the car is using when it's driving. Um, you've got what the cruise control would otherwise be set at, outside temperature of the car, and the time, and then the blank screen. Uh, I prefer to have it on for the percentage, like I said, so I'll just return it to that. Uh, on the left of the steering wheel, you've got the cruise control settings. Uh, you press this bottom button to turn on the cruise control. Uh, you press the set button to activate the cruise control uh, and that will set the activation to the speed that you're currently driving at. You can then increase or decrease uh, what the cruise control is set to. Um, then the, this is the resume button. So for example, if you press your foot on the foot brake, it will cancel the cruise control. Pressing resume will then just return it to the speed that it was previously last set at. Uh, on the right of the steering wheel, you've got the media center buttons. Um, you've got the mode button, which if I press that, you'll see switches between radio stations. And in this instance, uh, my uh, Penstock Music, uh, which is in there. So that will switch between them. Um, the wheel below it is for scrolling between sort of tracks within that. So if I scroll up and down, it will move between tracks on my um, my, uh, my Penstock. Um, I can then select the said track by pressing that button. Equally with the mode button, you can just switch between different radio stations and switch to a different radio station. Uh, the volume controls, obviously self-explanatory on that side. Um, the call button there, if you press that, that will bring up the phone menu, or, or you can use it to accept a call that will be coming in. Uh, I'll show it a little bit later when we've sort of connected uh, the phone up, but this will then also scroll between your recent uh, kind of call history. This is the voice activated uh, system button. Um, they're never exactly foolproof in what they do. Uh, moving back to the iDrive, I also use the iDrive over here to select between tracks instead of the little wheel button on the steering wheel. Before we move on to the media center controls, I'd like to just very briefly touch on the car's heating system. Well, to activate your heating system, you press the auto button there. That means the car will do whatever it thinks is best to get the car to the required temperature. You set the temperature on the wheel here, um, and I, I suggest setting it to, depending on time of year, 19, 20, 21 degrees, the temperature you actually want the car to be at. Um, turning it up really high, then getting too hot, then turning it down really low to cool yourself back down again is just going to waste energy in one of these electric cars. So I'll have it set at 20. Um, the um, this controls fan speed here. You know, as you go up, it will drain more energy. So uh, I would, when the car's got to the required temperature, have it set to as low as possible. Um, this button here alters the direction in which the um, the air is blown, uh, and it's displayed on the in the centre of the little wheel there. You've got your front screen demister uh, and your rear screen demister. Uh, remember, in order to preserve energy, turn those off. As soon as it's demisted. Right next to the iDrive controls is the Comfort and Eco Pro uh, button. Uh, comfort mode is what the car is normally set at, that's its nice sporty mode, um, so that's what you'll do most of your driving in. However, to maximize the range of the car, you may choose to go into one of the Eco modes. Now, if you press the Eco Pro button thus, um, it will go in, the car will go into Eco Pro mode, which is a more efficient driving mode. Basically, it reduces the power of the motor to conserve a bit of energy, and it sets a speed limiter on the car at 75 miles an hour. If you press it again, you go into what's known as Eco Plus mode, which again reduces the power of the motor still further. Uh, it disables the heat and aircon system, uh, and it sets a speed limiter at 56 miles an hour. Um, if you're really pushing the limits of the battery range of the car, you might choose to drive in that mode. Um, otherwise, 
you've got the modes above. Obviously just press it twice back just to get you back into comfort, your normal fun zippy driving mode. Now we can move over to the iDrive. It's controlled via these buttons down here. I, um, I prefer the iDrive system to your normal touchscreen because it's safer to use when you're driving once you've got used to it. Uh, we'll start with the media button, top left, give that a press, it obviously brings up the media display, which is currently playing uh, or playing items from my, uh, my pen stick which got plugged in, but it could also be playing stuff from, um, uh, from your auxiliary input or your Bluetooth connection to your phone. Um, you can use this to sort of search through your music collection, dare I delve into it, but yeah, you can search your albums or via track. As you go down, you can set playlists and things like that. And obviously, you can skip forwards and backwards between songs. We'll press the media button again. We've got some other options here. Um, this is a ProNav system. This one here. So this will you can actually store um, store tracks and music on the hard drive of this the, the car's computer. Um, obviously, you've got an external devices here, which is where you can select other things. Last bit over this side is you've got sound. So you click on that. It's where you adjust the bass and treble setting for in the car. If you want to um, randomise your music selection off your pen stick or whatever, um, you do it using the options button here. So have media displayed on the screen there, press the options button and up will come this screen. Click it, and that will select it as random, then when you go back to your media selection, media collection, and you're playing the songs, it will then just randomly scroll through different things. The options button will also bring up the split screen function on this. This is the, the ProNav setup. Um, uh, this is in some of the cars. It is an upgrade, so some of them will have uh, a normal standard business nav, which doesn't have this bigger screen and the ability to split it. But we'll select split screen. It will split the screen into two. Using your iDrive wheel, if you tip it over to the right hand side, it will illuminate just here and it will say split screen content. Can click on that and then you can choose what you want to have in that side. Um, at the moment it's showing the uh, arrow view for the sat nav, uh, however you could just put entertainment and it'll have your sat nav on this side and your music on that side. The radio button obviously brings up your radio menu, obviously this is the radio stations we're in at the moment. Um, we can go back over by tilting across to this screen which obviously displays the radio station that's playing. Obviously you've got a menu down the left hand side for skipping between stations. This icon at the top, give that a click, that's your digital radio stations listing. The telephone button, just here, brings up the telephone menu. Obviously step one is to connect your phone to the i3. So you do that by pressing the iDrive button to click on the Bluetooth menu, and then click add new device. And the i3 will now start searching for your phone. Then move into your phone, go into the settings section, go for connections, go to Bluetooth, and you'll see your Bluetooth is searching away. There's lots on this phone. There you go. This is the i3 just here. Click that, then it says it's pairing. The car and the phone should now be talking to one another. taking this time, there we go, click OK there, you click OK on your iDrive screen, both the phone and the i3 are going to start talking to one another, got a couple of other bits to click, there you go, so if you want to connect your phone for telephone calls, so bring up your phone directory and audio in case you've got some music and stuff on your phone, click OK, uh, click Allow on your phone, and there you are. So yeah, this phone, uh, it's actually Reese's phone, is now added to the, the car. Once you've got your phone connected, obviously you can use the car to make calls. Um, you can either click the phone button on the steering wheel or click the telephone button just there. Up will come your phone book or the Drive Green Office just for example. Just click that and the car will then phone the Drive Green Office. Once you've made a call, the recent call history will show up when you press the steering wheel button, you'll see the last call come up there. Uh, next is the sat nav. Obviously, you've got the nav button there. 
give that a press and obviously it brings up the navigation screen. Um, you use the iDrive wheel and sort of zoom in and zoom out. Um, you access the menu, it's here on the left hand side, uh, and you access it by tipping your iDrive wheel just over to the left and it brings up the menu there. Your guidance where we'll, we'll put in a destination in a moment, whether you like spoken instructions or not. Navigation that, is not active. There you go. I prefer it turned off. Routes is where you'll select, um, if you have a route criteria, whether you want to go on the fastest route, the shortest route, for example, avoiding motorways. I'll click the back button here just to go back again. Um, points of interest. Um, if you want an A to Z search, Quite usefully you've got um, a search for vehicle charging stations on as well so you click on that it will look for um, somewhere you can charge your car sort of nearby to where you are so that's good in an emergency if you haven't planned your journey out very well beforehand to program in a destination you click on guidance enter new destination destination input so we've just reset the computer so we need to set it to the UK uh, and then that will be there for the future. Then you click on place and postcode. You either put in the place or you can put in the postcode. We'll put in the postcode for the Drive Green office here. Go B, A, obviously you're doing using the wheel turning and then pushing. Click that to get onto numbers. It will be A3. Then there's a 4. Click all the way around to the S. And then L. And then we click OK. So then you can scroll down to start guidance, there you go, but otherwise it would come with the destination criteria and it would now help you navigate to that destination. Now we've got a few things set up in the car, I'm going to show you how to uh, take advantage of the programmable buttons on the top of the dash here. Anything that you can see on the iDrive screen, you can program and save it to one of these buttons. We'll start with the obvious, we'll program in a radio station, so we'll, let's go, what should we pick? Uh, radio 1 maybe, so there we go. we'll choose Radio 1 on the on the, the screen and you want to save it as button number 1, you would just hold and press button number 1 and as you can see button number 1 now will take you straight to Radio 1. Um, programmable buttons can also be used for um, say calling a particular phone number, so if I go to the telephone menu we'll go, we'll scroll down to the, the Drive Green office have that displaying on the screen and um, press button number two to be the drive green office. Now button number two will just call straight to the drive green office. Um, you can also program in one of these buttons to store a, a sat nav destination. Uh, to do this, uh, if you get your nav screen up, go over to your navigation menu. Obviously we've got this here set in as a recent destination. You could enter a new destination, but as long as your destination is shown there and you've highlighted start guidance, you can then press say number four, for example, and that will be start guidance and that will take you to that destination. So a new button, give that a press, brings up the menu. The first four are just duplicates of the buttons that are down here by the iDrive. Contacts, just another ability to get into your phone book contacts. Connected Drive. Now, the Connected Drive relates to BMW's online and app-based services. Um, these are no subscription services, so you, you may or may not even set these up. But while I'm talking about sort of online stuff, it's worth pointing out your i3 has an SOS button in the car, which will directly link you to BMW services. Um, it's at the top of the car here. Underneath here is a very dangerous looking yellow button. Obviously only to be pressed in an emergency, but that will phone you straight through to um, BMW's mobile care. We then move down onto vehicle information. Obviously it's a very useful bits in here. Obviously you'll, you'll have a manual with your car anyway. However, within here you also have um, your, your full owner's manual. Um, you can uh, do a, a quick search of, of that manual do a quick reference of that manual. It's got it broken down into various sections, onboard computer, just sort of range and consumption info, things like that. Trip computer, this is where you'll reset it. So you'll reset your counter. Uh, while we're on it, actually to reset your um, 
physical range counter. Just press that button on the side of there. But obviously you can reset things in here. Astral journey, vehicle status. This is where you can go to monitor your tire pressures. I'll jump at the time and selecting it will bring up all the tire pressures are set at. You can reset tire pressures if you need to. Service info's in there. The check control is very handy. If you click on that, it will bring up whether there's any sort of uh, faults with the car. From time to time, you'll see little little warning triangles appear up here on the screen, normally in grey. They're normally minor things such as screen wash needing filling or the key having a low battery in it. Um, but you'll go into vehicle status, a little triangle at the bottom to find out what it is the triangle refers to. Uh, last of all is the settings within the menu. Um, lots to go through here again. So click here on settings and it brings up the setting menu. There's lots on there so we'll just work our way down. Uh, departure time, you click on that. That's what you would do to um, uh, program in a departure time to let the car know when you're leaving for work or something so you can ask it to warm itself up before you leave. If you click the precondition for departure time, what it'll do, uh, now you've set that time, uh, that, that, that profile, uh, the car will automatically turn itself on, heat itself up to whatever you've got the heating and air con set to, to warm the car up, defrost it on a frosty day. Also as well, it does, uh, it does pre-warm the battery as well, which can also add a little, a little bit of extra to your range when you're about to go on a long journey. Next is charging. Um, again, you can set a charging profile in here. Um, you can set it to charge immediately, so that's what most people have it set up. Whenever you plug in, the car will charge. If you want to charge with an off-peak tariff, um, you would then alter the times on here. Range extender. Obviously not present on the uh, battery only i3s, uh, however this is where you would turn on your range extender to help maintain your charge over a journey. Uh, when you buy a car from us we'll program in a button, so you've just got button number 8 that you'll press to activate this. All you do is click hold state of charge, the little triangle will jump up to where the battery level is at at the time and the range extender will then maintain the charge at that level. If you take the range extender off by clicking that or pressing number eight, little triangle will then drop back down to its normal place, which is where the car will automatically bring on the range extender to stop you running out of charge. Uh, traction control, self-explanatory really. Um, obviously you can turn it off, but obviously only in exceptional circumstances. Um, maybe if taking your i3 on a racetrack, um, you want you to take it off. Equally, you might actually turn it off in really slow, snowy, patchy, icy conditions. Touchpad, this relates to the Pronav setup. This little wheel here is a little touchpad. So where you've got it clicked on these things, you can use it to use your finger to I know, write the number four or write numbers and letters when you're doing the, the tap now, for example, or, or scrolling through any of the menus. Connections, just another place where you can access the Bluetooth menu to pair up your phone sound another place where you can go to alter the treble and balance etc uh, on the car speed um, you can set a speed limit warning lights there will be different settings depending on the trim level of your of your i3 some have an ambient interior lighting you can adjust the brightness with it you can uh, adjust uh, like the triple turn signal if you don't like that on welcome lights when you uh, click and unlock the car, eco pro mode, you can make some minor adjustments, doors and keys. Uh, this is something I do like to do uh, with customers. Um, you've got um, obviously various things you can do, like automatically relocking the car, things like that. Um, the, whether you want the, the indicators to, to blink uh, when you unlock the car, but this is quite useful. On your key, which I will just get up here now, this little diamond button here is a programmable button. Now you can use it to do a few things. Um, for standard, it's set to tailgate, so you click that or just open the boot. Uh, however, I like setting it to auxiliary climate control. That way, when you press the diamond button, uh, point it at the car, give it a good press, it will switch on the heating or aircon system to warm the car up or cool the car down.
and GPS tracking. Let's have a look in there. With your connected drive set up, you can have GPS track on the car set up. So we'll give that a click. That sets that up. That is all of the everything through the menu. I've just skimmed through it because there's a lot to go through there. Uh, but pretty much that concludes running through everything in the iDrive. I hope that was helpful. There's lots to go through in your i3. However, we will over time be adding some more bite-sized video pieces to our library covering some of the main features. And of course, we're available at the phone or the email should you have any questions. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching and enjoy your i3.